Hey, good morning, friends. I got my coffee. Get yours. Going to be here for a little bit. Um, I wanted to go over quite a few things today and just um, cover exactly what's going on with my medicine consulting and the addition of terpene healer. Now, for many of you who may know me or have been involved or talk to me every day, uh, you see this as a normal transition. Others out there who may only pop in or visit the website or don't know Irvin and I uh, may be going, what the heck is going on? What it I don't get this. What's going on? Well, um, it was a natural transition when you look at what happened in Florida. And with what happened in Florida and taking away full flower for patients, uh, flower is terpenes. Flower has terpenes. Cannabis plant, the cannabis plant has hundreds of terpenes. Those are the signalers that uh, basically tell the cannabinoids what you want to do. And uh, I, I've helped thousands of patients over the past few years uh, choose their medicine in legal states where their flower was available, Montana, Colorado, uh, and other states, Michigan. I've been, I've been all over the country. And what I found is when I was out helping these patients to choose their medication, their nose right there told them what they wanted, and not one of them spent a dime on something that didn't appeal to them or make them drool. I always explain it as the drool test. If it makes you drool, I'm drooling thinking about it right now. Um, if it makes you drool, your body probably wants it, and it very well could be how our endocannabinoid system talks to us and says, hey, I want that. Give me that. And, and it has no other way to communicate. So what better way, especially when you consider that the endocannabinoid system oversees all of our neurology and all of our neurological systems. So it has a lot more control over our bodies than a lot of people understand because it is so understudied at this time. So as we learn more and more and more about the endocannabinoid system, I hope we find that my suspicions are true. But right now I can only assume that they're suspicions, but that is a big belief of mine. And so that is how we wound up with Terpene Healer. I had actually went on the quest and was sourcing cannabis terpenes straight from the cannabis plant, got turned on to essential oils, got into doing much more research and becoming a certified aromatherapist, which I'm working on right now, and then I'm moving on to clinical um, for the certifications. I'm already technically really kind of working that way just with all of my library and research that I've done. And um, that's where it ties together is – uh, my medicine consulting is definitely what we're doing, but that part of the aspect is, you know, Irvin and I both own that. We're partners. That's really the part where we conduct the business part of it and the education part of it, uh, the lobbying, um, the speaking tours, the book signings, all of that is my medicine consulting. Terpene Healer is my little area where uh, I get to go and talk about terpenes and these wonderful things, and um, I guess I'd like to thank the Florida legislature for helping me get here because if they never would have taken away flour, which I'm still very upset about, Regulate Florida is the only cure to that. So anybody who doesn't know, please visit regulateflorida.com. I know it's a little off topic from what I put in here, but we'll only have full access for patients when we have full legalization for adult use. And there are so many people I know out there who do not want to be part of a registry and they don't want to have to uh, go through all of the hoops to get a card. They want to be able to walk in the door, buy what they want, and go home. No questions asked. So I believe in that thoroughly myself. But anyway, I digress. Back to terpene healer. Um, I started adjusting my, my clients' medications with terpenes over a year ago and have just found fantastic success, quite honestly. Um, I have an autistic client that I've been working with now for walking up on a year here, and um, had dynamite success, microdosing all the way. Uh, none of my uh, clients I ever want to see when they hit 21 years old, you having to gobble a thousand milligrams of cannabis a day or a cannabinoid product, be it hemp or cannabis or whichever they choose, whichever works for them, because we find that there are multiples of multitudes of different um, avenues of treatment, and so that's where terpene healer comes in. And truly, I have started to where we begin with the terpenes first. And that's where we start with the essential oils first and how to use them, what's the proper usage, and then sedge into adding either hemp or THC, dependent upon what their needs are, what their wants are, and quite honestly, the legality of their state. Um, some people can only utilize the essential oils because of the legality of their state, and they do not want to break the law, and I, I don't blame them for that. And I don't condone uh, anybody really doing that, but I will tell you I know many parents um, – 
no law is going to stand in their way if it's going to help their child. So I hope people take note of that and will help to fight for this, this right to health for everybody, especially parents of very sick children. The, I, I've championed pediatric application since 2010 with the publication of my first issue of Montana Connect. And it's very important to me that we do not poison and toxify our children. So that's the other reason why certified pure therapeutic grade oils are all that I will use. When I first started getting into essential oils and dabbling, boy, here I was all concerned about, I needed to have the cannabis terpenes straight from the cannabis plant, no adulteration, they had to be perfect, no synthetics, all of that. But I was getting my lavender off the shelf at, like, I'm not going to mention a store, but we'll just say a local store with a wellness kiosk. I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. And um, I, I found that, that wasn't some very good thinking here. You know, here I am telling my, my clients, okay, we have this great, you know, cannabis derby and I did all this to get it. And then this essential oil and it's crap. So um, that's where I got into the doTERRA line and certified pure therapeutic grade. Very important to me. Yeah, they may cost you a little bit more, but in the long run, they save you a lot of money. You use less to get a better effect. So that, is hugely important to me. And then I'll also I'm a firm believer in, you know, if you ain't using it, what are you doing selling it? So uh, I've adapted our protocols and I always have a diffuser going on in the house. If you see a little fog going on here, that's my diffuser. I, I love my diffuser. I have a monster. And um, that's always going and I can alter the blends. So like say Irv comes home from work and I want him to be happy and have a good day and de -de -de, I'll find something relaxing for him because his work as a stockbroker is very trying. So that's one way that you can even just alter the mood in your house is by utilizing the essential oils. And then another thing that I do is um, On Guard is very good for immune support. I put that in the diffuser all the time, especially in the fall time with, with the illness coming on and all the bugs going around. And then I absolutely love it for a hand sanitizer. I broke down and actually bought one from them and I make my own out of the Encore oil because I have all the stuff to make all of that. And so uh, the biggest thing that really swung me here onto the doTERRA products was my hot flashes. I don't know anybody who knows me and talked to me in the past two and a half, three years in person may have seen quite a few times. Um, I'd even have to stop a conversation because I would just turn beet red and I couldn't even have a conversation because my brain was on fire and I'd be like, wait, wait, I, I can't talk. Hang on. I can't even put a thought together. And then once it all went away, then I could talk again. And I tried everything. I'm not going to go into the, uh, long diatribe of all of the horse urine like I did in my other one, but I will tell you I tried everything and it didn't work for me. But um, this product here did, the phytoestrogen, and I take it every day. I do not run out. When I ran out of it, I suffered, and boy did I suffer. The hot flashes came back right away. So that told me that this worked, and that's what really, really sold me. And then also I used the Clary Calm product because it's the Clary Sage, and this is – I'll even dose with it right now because I'm due. A couple little roll-ons on the wrist just like that. Hit the neck and, and no more hot flashes and it smells yummy. Now, speaking about smelling yummy, my honey came home yesterday and put a big smile on my face because his secretary came over and she's sniffing him going, what is that smell? And it was in tune. And I love this. And when you read up on the oils and in tune, it's totally for helping somebody to have focus in their day and to really stay on point and focused. And um, Irvin just gets really stressed out with his job, and I get that. And any way that I can comfort him, I'm going to comfort him any way that I can. So every day now I hit him with this, and, and he really likes it. He actually treats it like a cologne now. And then um, – when his secretary came over and she liked it, that just made my day because that means it's attracted to other people in the office. They're not offended by the scent, and maybe it'll help them too um, if it helps them to remain focused. Irv might have a little office full of people following him around. <laughs> so hopefully when that happens, he'll be going, I can get you your own. You want a bottle? Um, <laughs> but I thought that was a lot of fun when he came home and told me that. It really made my day. And then. Um, 
also another thing that I've started Irvin on that I just really am, I'm seeing results. I don't know that they're great yet, but just seeing results with what's been going on with his back issues, deep blue, the, the polyphenol complex, God, I'm taking that every day, and then I make a rollerball, and I rollerball him with the deep blue oil. And he even asked me for it now. Hey, are you going to do this to me today? And I'll get out my rollerball and go rollerball him and uh, send him off for his day. And that I always hit over the application point up the spine. Um, a lot of people don't understand that dosing of oils is very important, and the way that you dose is critical. So, you know, you don't just slap them on your wrists and off you go. I can get away with that with my Clary Sage because I also do a lot of this. and the inhalation and it gets into my brain and into my limbic system, immediate, immediate absorption of those molecules. So there's reasons why we uh, treat differently. And then with the spinal application, you get a longer term uh, dosage. It'll stay in the bloodstream longer. And also it's more immediate because you're getting into all of those nerves right on the spinal column. And so that oil gets absorbed and Hopefully it has great effect throughout the rest of the day. Um, in my research and all of my education that I've been doing with these oils, a topical application of essential oils, they do find that um, these oils can stay in your bloodstream for four to six hours. So that's pretty good dosing for that. You know, you can carry around a little roller ball like this and go and, and put it back on again when you need it. And you're away from the opioids and not eating the pills. So that, that's really important. And then um, my daughter, uh, for her protocol, it was really interesting. Um, she really gets cramps really bad. And so it was so simple as she took clary sage when I had told her about the clary sage and then also peppermint because she really liked the peppermint. I made a roll on for that. She calls it her period juice. And that's what she rolls on when she has cramps. And she puts it over, you know, rolls it on over her uterus, on her belly. And um, that's another thing, too, is you treat over where you're trying to get the effect. So she rolls it on her, on her belly and that stops the cramps. And then she actually loaned it to a couple of her friends to try it because they're like, what is that? Is it helping you? And they tried it within five minutes. They're like, wow, my periods are, my cramps are gone. So I make sure that she has a bottle of that every time that's going on and it's worked really good for her. And so that's some of how we've changed some of our wellness protocols. Um, I'm dabbling with the oils every day. Uh, it's learning more and more. There's so much more to be learned. And if you go and start searching on, like, in my can uh, cancer protocol I'm going to talk about before we close this video, um, I really want people to go and look up Clary Sage and uh, cancer on PubMed and read about apoptosis and how Clary Sage aids in apoptosis. So that's an important part. But first, I want to talk about, before we head into that protocol, I want a little bit more instruction on what's going on here. And this is one thing I carried around for a long time. And this I got from Leafly. What you smell equals how you feel. And if you have a look at that, you can even pause the video after we're done. After I, uh, you know, of course I'll save it and upload it. Don't be afraid to pause it so you can read. And go to Leafly and look it up. But this was my chart that I used regarding my cannabis terpenes for a long, long time. And if you look at what they smell like, it will explain to you the different plants that they're talking about there. And all those plants, when I go through my book, they have terpenes. We've got linalool, we've got uh, limonene, caryophylline, beta caryophylline, all the panines, up the hundreds of terpenes and monoterpenes and diterpenes and sesquiterpenes and... Yeah, there's a lot to do with terpenes, and it's pretty in-depth science. So um, unless you're ready to go out and, like, really get nuts like I do because I'm, I'm totally a nerd and a science geek, at this level is where you learn about monoterpenes, diterpenes, sesquiterpenes, and all of that. In other words, in, other, in any other case, though, don't be afraid to just call me and ask me, and I'll look it up because I've got it all behind me, and I've got the books to do it right now. And I'm here to help. And I want to see more people doing this because this is how we're going to make cannabis and hemp and cannabinoid therapies, period, just work better for everybody. So, and I'll, I'll, I'm always down for cannabis. See, I got my Sunshine Cannabis shirt on today. Gotta love Sunshine Cannabis. And um, we're going to make it better. 
especially when the legislature takes away flour. We can't have that. So now we talked about this. Everybody's waiting for the cancer protocol, I'm sure, and that's why I saved it for last. I'll make you stay tuned and watch. Except for those skippers. I know who you are. You're going to skip forward and just skip over all this stuff. So a couple things I wanted to go over regarding essential oils before we talk about the protocol, because it's very important that you know that there is certified pure therapeutic grade. That is all I ever, ever use for internal consumption, ever. Nothing but. Um, if you want to go buy adulterated off a grocery store shelf and pay less, you may pay more in the long run for not getting the effect that you want and possibly making yourself sick. I know that my oils are tested and I can find a lab result on the bottom of every bottle. There's a control number. I go to source to you.com and I can find the lab results. And I'm even talking to another lab about, hey, but let's test some of these oils against them to see what, you know, they have the capability to do the testing. Well, why don't we run some tests on it and see what you get compared to theirs with a the third party, you know, another way to test. But that's just some entertaining things on the side. But um, how to use is very important. We have topical applications. Some oils can be used neat. I prefer to dilute everything myself, and here's why. Um, using a neat oil, these oils can evaporate very quickly, very quickly, and they'll evaporate faster off of your skin before they go into your skin. So a lot of times you want to use, I use a therapeutic grade fractionated coconut oil, and you want to use that oil to help keep those oils onto your skin so that they don't evaporate so quickly. So when you dilute them with a fractionated coconut oil, that helps to keep them from evaporating away quickly. It'll allow them to absorb into your skin better, and you actually get better absorption when you do dilute. So read up on it, Google it. Find out anything I don't know, come back here and post it in the comments. I'd love to have dialogue about this. Um, another way, a neat application can be very good for, you know, like uh, the inhaler trick that I like to do. That would definitely be a neat application because you want those evaporating right away. I don't know if you've seen my inhaler video, but I'll show you really quick. Put a drop of oil on your hand here. Get a smooth around like that. That's your inhaler. Now, I'm not doing it right now. I just want people to see what the inhaler is. You can put a drop of oil in your hand right there, and you're off and you're going. You don't have to go and buy one of those pens. Please do not ever put propylene glycol into your body. You're plasticizing your lungs when you do that. And it's totally molecular level straight to your limbic system when you do that inhalation therapy and only do it with certified pure therapeutic grade please I, I just can't i can't even stress that enough we're getting directly into your body faster than any pill can with what's going on with these essential oils so be sure you're using good ones and um i don't even know what to do with all the old ones that i buy because i don't want to put them in my diffuser because that goes into my body too so any suggestions? Let me know in the comments. I, I hate to throw things away, but I'm about to bag them up or something. Um, anyway, back off we go. Aromatic. So we went from topical. Aromatic is huge. That's where you can just go and uh, open a bottle and sniff it, or you can have it in your diffuser. Aromatic is also to include after you apply doing this. When you do your inhaler, is a type of aromatic, but then also always remember you can. Go like that and get the nasal into the limbic system. So inhaler hits the lungs. That nasal like that goes straight into, the, into your brain, to your limbic system. So that's a great, great method, especially with those emotional oils. If you have somebody who's suffering depression, remorse, um, a lot of people that are grieving, I love to hit them with the con console oil because that will help to perk them up and help to get – you get trapped into grief and it's so hard to get out because the dopamine receptors in your brain. So that's one thing we, we got to pick it up and people are like, I don't want to take an antidepressant. Okay, well let's do an oil or something, but we got to get you picked up and unblock those receptors and block the right ones. And that's what we're doing. This is a receptor medicine. Now internal application is a huge, huge um, issue that can be utilized with essential oils. And that's why I do appreciate doTERRA and what they do with that. Not a lot of the oils out there will tell you that they can be used for internal consumption. 
doTERRA does. You go to their website, you'll see Dr. Hill putting frankincense in capsules and taking it himself. And then also in my studies and my education to become a certified aromatherapist and moving on to clinical applications, um, there are definitely internal applications that should be utilized, and that's where we're going to go now with the um, uh, cancer protocol. Um, one thing I do want to be sure that everybody notes, uh, and, and key points here with these oils too, um, one thing you want to be very careful of is check for photosynthesis of oils and that if they're going to cause a rash or something out in the sun. Um, one, one, one that's very, you have to be very careful about with that, bergamot, I love it. <laughs> I love this oil. Earl Grey tea, put a drop in your black tea and you got Earl Grey with this stuff. I love bergamot, okay? But if you put that on topically and then go out in the sun, it's photo. it, it can cause you to have a rash. So... Time your oils, and if you really have to do that one topically, do it at a time when you're not going to go outside. And then speaking of outside, another thing I'm going to bring up every video because it's very important to me is that oxidization. Oxidation, it's oxidation. Oxidation is the word. And oxidation is what happens when these oils get open when they're hot. And also when the lid is left off. Oxidation um, is the loss of the gases and they evaporate away. If you leave this lid off, this bottle will go away to nothing in a few days. And then when it's hot, it's even more volatile. And volatile meaning it's gaseous, like lemongrass. You, if you open lemongrass when it's hot, you can lose up to 60% of the efficacy of that oil just into the air from opening it hot. So for those of you who live in a hot state or you're any place, if you're around a wood stove, don't store your oils by the wood stove. If you get your oils delivered to you like I do in Florida, do not, no matter how excited you are, I get so excited when my oils show up. Ah, I can't wait. I stuff the box in the fridge and I just wait a little bit longer until I can take them out, put them in my hand and they're cool because they mean that much to me that I'm not going to have them get wasted and go away to nothing. So. Always protect your oils, and that's a good way. And remember, oxidation. So now, heading into cancer protocol, there's a couple I want to talk about um, because these are a lot of people don't worry about people not wanting to be high, and I do. And so for people who are doing a THC protocol on uh, cancer, we're just walking into cancer protocol right now, I like them to have the tools to be able to not be high and go function. Because a lot of times if you're treating cancer, there are very high doses of uh, resin. Now, people call cannabis oil an oil, but that that's you can call it that just for the sake of it. But these are truly oils, what I'm working with here. Um, cannabis is a resin. You're, you're extracting the resin from the plant. So it becomes an oil again when they put it like in coconut oil or something like that when they do that. But... Um, that's my differentiation there. When you hear me talk about oils, I'm talking about the essential oils, the terpene oils. When I talk about resin, I'm talking about THC or CBD or maybe even an isolate, those type of things. That's my differentiation, and I hope people will pick that up because there is a difference. And when you learn about extraction methods, you'll understand that. And there's a lot of education with these oils about how they're, distract, how they're extracted, and there's steam distillation, there's... Uh, expression where they squeeze them out like a lot of the lemon is squeezed out of the rind and um, there's different types and grades of oils as well like I believe it's Lang Lang that has three different um, grades of oil and frankincense as well so I digress we're going to go back to the cancer protocol these are what I call my stoner rescue now black the, the copaiba is a new one that's come out, and I mean, it's selling like crazy. People are just discovering the effects of it. Black pepper's been around a long time. Black pepper you can utilize on your shelf. And I actually, um, for people who are too high and need to stop that effect immediately, I really recommend for black pepper, get the finest grind you can get, half a teaspoon, two ounces of water, rinse your mouth. Uh, this is a very, very hot oil. I wouldn't want to see anybody putting that directly into their mouth because it's these oils are very, very concentrated. So the black pepper, you can add that to an internal consumption oil, but only a drop at a time, to help stop the psychoactive effect. But when they're already high and like 
if they're vomiting or something like that because they've overindulged or had too much, that's where you take the black pepper, half a teaspoon to an ounce of water, two ounces of water, whatever works. It's not going to be pleasant, but it's going to be a lot better and get them past the puking and the gagging because everybody hates that. So rinse and spit, rinse and spit. They don't have to swallow it, but they can. Now, copaiba, where this is taken off and getting so popular with everybody, and what's the significance between the two of these is they both have caryophylline in them. Caryophylline blocks the CB1 receptor and is an agonist for the CB2 receptor. So that is why they're starting to call, there are certain trains of thought that we call copaiba, <laughs> got to look at the back of the card so I get the right one, that would call copaiba a um, cannabinoid because it does that. Well, if they're going to call copaiba cannabinoid, then we got to call black pepper a cannabinoid too because they both have caryophylline in them. They both block the CB1 receptor. Copaiba has 65% caryophylline compared to pepper having about 35%. So when you look at effectiveness, and this you can drip, I, I've put this right in people's mouths, one drop sublingually, and they felt better. But you always have to remember too, um, if somebody has had a medible or an edible or, or resin and ingested that, uh, that's already, if they're way high at the time when that's going on, um, to ingest this, it, it's still going to take a little bit for it to get in there. And the backup on that that I've just found hands down works is black pepper. But I would not use the oil for that. Just use the herb. So that's how you stop it. Now, when people are taking a regime for cancer protocol, I don't care if they're doing THC, CBD, or not even utilizing it all. They don't have to utilize cannabis if they don't want to. There are some people who just won't, and that's their choice. I've met them. I've known them. It's heartbreaking to watch, but it's everybody's personal choice and decision, so we have to honor that, and I'm not going to chase anybody down and stuff THC down their neck if they don't want it. That's just not how it works, but some of the greatest things to help fight cancer are dynamite. Now, these two oils I'm going to talk about, frankincense and myrrh, they really are the king's oils. Uh, I mean. Pfft. They're fantastic just to use daily. I put frankincense on every day, and it works fantastic for uh, anti-inflammation and just an excellent mood thing. I mean, <laughs> but health-wise, I just find, like, if my brain's getting a little tired and I'm stressed out, I hit my frankincense, do my, and, and I just, okay, I can keep going, and it's awesome. And then myrrh, when you mix frankincense and myrrh, I put those two in a rollerball for a cancer patient, mail that off. Wow, I had to try it on myself. I'm making my own rollerball. It was fantastic. But um, I add these in a capsule. I put these in capsules. I encapsulate all my uh, oils for my patients. And so I'll go and I'll lay out all my little capsules in my little tray, and I'll drop at a time in every little capsule, one drop at a time. Frankincense, I usually hit at least one drop of frankincense and one drop of myrrh. Now, the next ones, I double up on clary sage. And why that is, please Google it and go to PubMed and read up on it. Type in cancer, clary sage, apoptosis. You'll be amazed what you find. Not only does this help me stop my hot flashes, but it kills cancer cells. It helps to promote apoptosis. So read up on that fantastic oil, and I just love it. And then I mix that with Lang Lang, where I read also that Lang Lang is very, very good for cancer patients as well, for fighting cancer. But even more so, you mix this with a clary sage, and you got a fantastic mood elevator. I mean, I'm, I'm going to start playing with the blends here for uh, my hot flashes too, just because it's so wonderful and make it multipurpose. But I absolutely love that. And then the other thing that I add, just because of all the huge effects, and there's a, a Copaiba Success Stories group on Facebook that's actually quite huge right now, and people are having great success with that. I add a drop of this to every capsule I put together, every single one of them. I can only get one bottle a month. It's killing me till January when they can sell more. But um, I, 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 my cancer patients, no matter what, get at least one drop per capsule in every capsule of oils that I put together for them with these essential oils. 
and I have all my little colored capsules so I can color code them and what's in what and I'll do my clary sage and glang glang and one and frankincense and myrrh and copaiba and another and have them take them at different times throughout the day and it's just sunshine and roses so read up on those oils go to PubMed go to NCBI go to the you know go to all the research sites and look up cannabinoids and whatever essential oils they are, these are and also another thing that's really trick and I, I have to do this because I just love these little cards these essential oil flashcards I got shout out to EO and such absolutely love them they're very good for helping to explain to people what's going on and then I love the little sayings that they put on them like for copaiba I'm tapped it's tapped it's tapped out of a tree like maple syrup so they give you all these little things about um, how to remember the oil can't go get more old school than myrrh <laughs> if you can't <laughs> and then um, Clary sage yeah it's that time of the month they say well that's our female that's a female plant that's one of our estrogens so and then Lang Lang when you smell Lang Lang bow chicka wow wow is right so thank you EO and such love my cards but um, that's about all I have for you guys today and I think I beat you up pretty good I did a half an hour here with you I'm gonna get this done and saved up and stay tuned for more and if anybody has any questions please message me on Facebook message me at terpene healer um, that's the best way to be sure that I get your message and can answer your questions and if you want to see me do a live video on it I'm gonna be doing more I'm gonna make you guys crazy so keep watching uh, tune in share with your friends and if you like what you see please like my page and sign up for so you can tune in when it's live and I can answer any questions you got thanks so much for tuning in and watch for more this is so fun <laughs>